Session. session number six, we implemented API gateway and implemented filter checking. Okay, how to implement API gateway? So, we create a one uh, project by using Eureka client to register API gateway inside the Eureka registry and implement that uh, what is the cloud gateway dependency and dev tool for the restarting whenever the code changes there. So, we have the discovery client that are your API gateway. Okay, so now this is the YML configuration. Okay, here you can uh, route your request. Here you can route your request. This is the predicate is there. So which your which you want to route request, which map to be there or registry registry name. Okay, inside the Eureka registry server. Right. So I want to need to be one with that. This is a single entry point of your all microservices you have created. So inside this, here you can check. Here you can check we have a great API and say API. But here we only just run one more time and see. Run this. Let's run this in boot app. Okay, here in the uh, filter chaining, we just modify the existing uh, filter. So here we can check local host. Not this one, so fix one. Right. So now no register, no service is registered right now. So admin server we need to run. Run the admin server. Okay, so we need one. What is that? We need one Zipkin Zipkin server inside that of my four services. There, okay. Zipkin that is just only open. This is the Java hyphen jar, how to the jar. 
Mark's Jupiter is run. Let's see what everyone was running. Let me check local host admin for I think so 2024. Let's see. Yeah, perfect. So now your Jupiter is a good code 9419. So now it's uh, your running. All the services are right now. It's running. Now let's uh, run our service. Say hello. Run. And it will do. Not this one. I need to run this. Let's run the configuration. I am not here. I am not going to perform any load or anything. Okay. So say hello. Just remove the load on this. Okay. Just I will remove the load. Okay. After that, I will start configuring. Now I start the your uh, retrieve service. Then run. Let's see a refresh. Will you record? One service is registered, another file is registered right now. Yeah, waiting is registered. So now, right now, you can access this uh, by using that particular URL, right? So, like 101. Okay, so here, local place 1011, right? Leave it right here. Let's see. Yes, we are getting error so because not moving that, right? So, let me check that URL. Which API? Great API we are hitting. Okay. So here you can go controller. Great and name. Okay. V1 slash great. V1. V1 slash great. Yes. Okay. Now we are getting null value. Null value. Okay. IPSP. We need to add Okay, well, let's check the device creating a null value. Okay. So now message from concatenate message with that hello. Here is a fit. Hi, IPSP, welcome to free learning. Here, if this data is getting inside this, it's right. So in that term, some of the data is happening. Okay. Name is name, code. So welcome to free learning hub. Right now, the port is not there well, because we are not forcing that dynamically port. That's why it's null values. Right? So it's happening. So now, I right now we are hitting. Now, this is the great API. Now, I want to hit. <laughs> Hello. Okay. So just hit it. What is that now? Port of Hello. Okay. okay. Inside the YML file, okay, one zero zero one zero one zero. Okay, slash hello, slash UV, right? The data is getting or not? Hello, slash not getting. Okay, say hello, request working, hello, what's the name, right? This should be one seven. Code number is one zero one. Yes. Okay, we need to pass the code. Okay, so note this, note this. So, so again, we can run now. Okay, check inside the data registry. Code is coming, yeah. So right now this code is coming one zero one. So here one zero one. Here we get the data one zero one is code is running. So now here you can see now we get that uh, one zero one. Okay, one zero one is the It will good. It's a load balancing is performing. That's why error is given to us. Okay. Do we need a multiple? Uh, 
greet v1 greet nu six all this matter the neighbor nu Okay, now we get that output, right? Perfectly. Wait, one. Now the data is going to go one zero one two, right? So now this is happening right now. We are not accessing with the single entry point of the server. Okay, we are having different different stores right in there. Okay, so we need a one entry point for all the micro services to run a target. This is the each case of a target. Run it with this. Let me check. It's registered. Yeah, nine zero nine. Right now, we had a local host nine zero nine. Right now, we are getting greet API. So greet API related to Vivek is coming. Right. So now I want to get hello. We want to want to write hello. Ram. So we say Raja. So now. With the single entry point of that, with the single entry point, with the single entry point, this is the API gateway we have. With the single entry point, and nine zero nine four, nine zero nine four, we are getting two different microservices. This is the two different microservices, and they are getting the same. Right? We are getting with the this port, right? This is the use case of microservices. Here you can see this is the entry point, right? If I get this is the register, all the microservices registered in this, this inside the service with the class service registry, and all the all that request go through from this if I get this. This is returns and out is happening. So let's. So this is our last class discussion. So now today's discussion is a different kind. So today's discussion is what is that? We have a three way, three ways to do. Right? We have a three go. We have a three ways to do. To to log it. Okay. Right. First we will route. The request, predicate the request, and filter the request. So, how this is happening here? You can see in this in this scanning part, in this scanning part, you can see at the right component. Here, we are performing that filter scanning. Filter scanning, right? We modify the uh, header, we modify that header and request as well. Like, predicate. So, here you can see. Routing is used to define which request should be hosted by which REST API. What is that route? What is it? Route is means it hosted the request and decide to which REST API is accessed this process this request, right? So this is the meaning of route. Route will be configured using predicates. Okay. Predicates, what is the meaning of predicate? This is the Java 8 function predicate. The input type is the string member, string member, server web exchange. Okay, this black match with any other MSQ request such as the headers or parameters, the URL patterns. Okay, the filter filters are used to manipulate incoming requests and outgoing response of that your application. If the filter is the security of an application. So main advantage of this, main advantage is that we need a security security for our application. So we need to implement the security inside that API gateway. Inside that gateway, we can implement the security. Okay. So now here you can see this is the filters. So here you can observe the meaning of filter. Filter has been manipulated in incoming request and outgoing request. We incoming request. We here we get the request right exchange. If so we get the request in the exchange, so we manipulate our uh, request and send back to the response to the another way, right? So this is the meaning. If it is an Amazon, I'm routing the particular request. 
we can validate client given token in the request using the filter or for the security purpose. Right. So now next is we can write the request and response tracking logic. Right. So filter are used to manipulate request and response of our application. Any cross cutting logic like security, logging, monitoring can be implemented using filter. So this is about the last class and some points I have missed in the last class to tell you. So that's why I take it. Row, predicate and filter. Predicates, rows and filters. Now, here you can see I have a signal Let 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 us right. so Here you can see here is the route is there. Routes is there. Okay. So route means process the REST API by using REST predicates. So the predicates is there. So by using predicates, the routes will perform that action. Okay. This name is taken from the registry and it will be identified. Code is also okay. I will share that code after that uh, all implementation done like config server and cache as well. Okay. So let's start about today's discussion. What is the developing config server? Okay. So first we need to understand what is that config server, cloud config. You can see. So in that uh, simple thing, if you want. Your application as a loosely coupled. If you want your application as a loosely coupled application, so we need to implement config server. So here I have reported some points. Like config our application properties and our application properties are final. Right. So DB props, SMT props, Kafka props, and app messages, etc. We need to separate from our application. Application dot properties or application dot YML file will package along with our application. It will part of our jam. It will our part of our jam. If you want to make any change to the properties, then we have to repackage our application and we have to redeploy our application. Right? So note, if we any change required in the config properties, then we have to repeat the complete project build and deployment, which is time consuming problem. To avoid this problem, we have to separate our project code and project config properties. To externalize config properties from the application, we have to use cloud config server. So cloud config server is part of Spring Cloud Library, right? So if the theoretical point, I will give an example to you. So application config properties file will be maintained in the git or other SVN attack or things properties. Microsoft will be converted will be from the config server and server will load the git application. So what does that mean uh, here? Okay. So now yeah, suppose so first I'm giving a problem statement. So this is our uh, project data. Build our project. Right. And deploy. So here. Yeah. Project code source code. Okay, here we have project source code, and here we have byte code code and the byte code build image. Docker image, build Docker image. Docker image, build Docker image.
if we have built proper image, then we need to push the proper or you can say deploy. Push to proper here. Uh, next deploy. Uh, right now, this is our project source code we have. Okay. Inside the project source code, we have a properties file. Like inside the inside this, uh, we have a properties file. Right. We have a properties file. We have a properties. First time, we need to convert our project into the bytecode. And bytecode, we need to build our... Okay. We need to build our bytecode into... What is that? Docker image. Then Docker image push to you on Docker Hub. And after that, you can deploy your project in our production server. We need to do this thing. Suppose... Suppose... I need to change some part in the properties file, some configuration I need to change here. Again, I need to compile this code. Again, I need to, these three steps we need to perform repeatedly when we perform any changes, like compile our code, then get the byte code, and build the Docker image, and push the Docker image, right? So we need to perform these three operations when we perform. So these problem help resolve by using config server, cloud config server. So config server is doing something, but suppose this is your project, okay, and this is our config server, right? This is our config server, and this is our properties file. This is our properties file, which is available in GitHub. GitHub properties. So Files. Profiles. This is our config server. Right. And this is our <clears throat> app. Our project. So when we perform, we separate our properties file to be our project with our project. So when we need any properties, so we configured some configuration is required. We configure our config server in our app, and config server is automatically load that file from that. It will load the files from that GitHub prop files, properties file. Okay. The practicals, so this will give the data to that config server. Config server will get the data, will return back to that your project, updated data. If you need any changes, if you need any changes in your properties, I need to change the port number. No, not a port number. I need to change some database configuration. Like I need to move uh, Oracle to MySQL. So we need to update that file inside this property, right? Inside the properties, we need to update that. That's it. All this is done. So we need to develop two one thing. What, what is that config servers? Config server. So we need to develop config server. This point I have written here. Here. We are configure our application in the config protocol file, right? Application that file will file is that will be packaged along with that our application means. Means it is the it is the tightly coupled tightly coupled okay application is our tightly coupled but inside this when our 
when we separate our properties file from our project, from our project, so it, it is not depending on our properties file. So it is not uh, like redeploying, re re white code generating all this. No, it will pass the data, updated data from that file, on which I will do all the things for us. Okay. So same thing I have written here. We can read it again. So I have read it for you. So here yeah, application dot properties or application dot viable file. We have two things: application properties, application viable file will be packaged along with our project. So it will be part of our jar file. If we want to make any changes to the properties, then we have to repackage our application. Okay, repackage our application. These things I have put. This thing, repackage our application. Repackage our repackage again. Repackage, repackage our application again. We need to repackage our application. So this problem is solved by this. If you any change required config property, then we have to repeat the complete project build and deployment. This is the main disadvantage for that. So we need to solve this problem by using to avoid this problem. We have to separate our project pool and project config properties file. Okay. To externalize config properties from the application, we have a cloud config server. Cloud config server is part of Spring Cloud library. How to develop? So here you can see our microservices will get config properties from config server. Where we get the properties? Config server. And config server will load them from Git repo. So here, its config server is load the data from which Git repository, and our application fetch the data from config server, right? These are the main here. So we need to develop the application. So first, we need to Git repository keep in the YAML file. I have wrote it. So you can see. So, Add the bone of the grid. Okay, we have a grid repository. One fit repo. I have maintained one repository. Okay, inside the app config, we have some database configuration also. Okay, I will take this project. And this is our, I will use the main dot Okay, this is this type of we can maintain. I will share this link. You can also use this link. Not a big deal for us. You can get the data. This is the public repo. So, second, we need to configure this config server, this dependency, and uh, this is the enable this config server as a config server. So, next is very, very important thing. In the PyML, in the YML, we need to, this is that uh, config server, we need to pass over, we need to pass over, what is that? We need to pass over, so we need to pass over, we need to pass our uh, GitHub repository URL here, our repository is available. So now we pass and clone on a startup. When we start that uh, server and clone that latest uh, repository, okay. One main important thing, two important thing when we perform the server, okay. What is that main important thing? We should your application name and your binary file should be the node like the node using one thing we need to we need to put application near and viable like properties 
these are diamond high to produce by the diamond 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 file you need should be should be same only take care about this so, now let's develop our uh, server okay so open so you do I need to read the properties of that here just Go to that bring a starter. Number six config server six server my bin seventeen but here you need to config server config. Okay, we need to add this dependency and then we need to add that. The string type. If any other required, you can just. These two dependency we need it. While developing these two, one if the server dependency is done, so we know it is okay. Then we are to require either anything that's so. Then there is all file selected for this. You have to go all these things. And here, inside is by enable this. Add the red enable. Enable config server. Which take the dependency is available. But to the config server, okay. My one upgrade to support. Okay, this let me enable this. That's all right. Enable. Enable. Config server. Now it's enabled. Config server is enabled. Now here, inside the properties, we need to convert it as a YML also. Or the means just right click, convert it into the YML. So this is the config server. So, config server is responsible to get the data from config server is responsible to get the data from the property. So, what is that? Uh, mm -hmm. What is that? Uh, configuration Spring Cloud Config Server. Get right? Yeah. Yeah. Spring dot cloud dot config dot git dot clone on a startup git url git uri server dot git config cloud dot git dot server dot well, what is the server url so now let me go copy this key and paste it and one more thing on a startup clone on a startup is true right true is true true perfect now that's it in the report server dot port i need to implement the port port
So our config server is ready. So its config server is loading the data. How we can identify it? not, but by using client, we can identify that project as loading. So now implement next project. So it's bring a starter. Now here. Here we can just see up to this we completed. Config server is completed. So we need to your config server we need to put in here. No, here config server not app. So here we completed up to this. So next we need to implement client. Client. Okay. We need a client. So just And access class package. Okay, it's to be starter. Here, config line. Okay, all these things is same. I need so here we need one dependency. What is the dependency? Sir, what is that? Line, not line. Okay. Here you can see config client, config client, right? We need the config client and that we need and that we need. Okay. That we need. Now next, finish. So inside this, this is the client. So here we not we not need to use that like client kind of thing. Okay, just we need to add this configuration in our project. What is that? So inside the YML, let's uh, do. Inside the Bible file, okay, convert uh, the Bible, okay, converted here, main. So our file name is main. So with our application name should be main. So now, spring dot, spring dot, config dot, import, import, what the, config dot, import, what the uh, name, Import option what is that optional right optional column on the server Hold on. Yes, TTP with port slash slash local host with port. I have put a 303, right? So that's it. Server name is just um, put it server dot port. Server dot port 4040. Now my client application is running on 40. So inside the one controller, I need to return. Package and not controller. Okay, rest controller. Here, one thing is you can understand. Plus. 
in your properties file in GitHub, it's written on key value pairs. Okay. It is not a simple like you are putting a properties file inside that Bible, not inside that key value pair. You can read it, the data. Okay, I believe it. Okay, so so here, what is that we need to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Last controller. Created. Yes, here is the last controller. Last controller, perfect. Now, now we need the data. We need the data. Okay, to public. String MSC. Okay. okay, I need the data at the rate value. Value and uh, inside the biomal file, you can check inside the biomal file. The message is there in the key value for message is there. So MSG just pass MSG, right? Okay, now data is deleted. So now public string get message. Okay, written mm -hmm. MSG. What the message? Text PXT data. And the rate get mapping. Like less, less, less. Okay. So first we need to run our config server. Run our config server. Run. Let's see if there are any issues. Oh, we need to start this. But maybe I need to start this later. Okay, some issue cannot execute unknown server. Okay, it's unknown server. Let me put a quote in my config server. Why not? So I have given the known to restart the program. So we need to stop this first. Terminate it all this. Terminate it left. Uh, refresh. Uh, run the project. Mm -hmm. Main cannot be resolved. Up. Main cannot be resolved. Okay. Why it's main? Some bizarre
to be some dependency issues with their items. But yesterday I have shared this. So with this, <coughs> what is that meaning? You let me see. Take on side books. That is the lights given. Configs have a perfectly configs have a window URI cloud dot config dot server dot get URI have mentioned dot clone dot on a startup tool. Okay, okay. We need to add one thing. The default level is main. Which branch you need to know? So we need to add it. So inside the YML, YML or clone is here also. Default level is master. Master, na? default level is master. Uh, let me check. Here yeah, inside this master is master right. So now to stop this, run this again. Okay. It started, it started right. So we need to start that, it means our connection is perfectly established with that your application to the GitHub. Now up to this is uh, completed, up to this is completed part. This part is completed. Connection is established. Now run the client application. Now our client is running code zero four. We have a REST API, or otherwise we can use Postman or it. So inside this local host uh, four zero four zero slash memus three. Yes, we get the data from where we are hitting this endpoint. Right? We hitting this endpoint and we get in the data. Now, this type of thing we can do by using this. <laughs> but we have some problem. But we have some problem. Suppose we change something here. We change it. Add it. At ESP. Free. Free learning. Right. Free learning. Like commit the changes. Submit it. Now, what do you think? We need to know the refresh. What is that problem we have? Now we refresh this. No, data is not changing, right? We commit the changes, but data is not changing. Means, which I have told totally is wrong. Do you think? Do you think this is the wrong? No. This is perfectly right, but we need to some do some. We need to do some configuration. So up to this, we need to restart our client app first. We need to restart our client app. Now we need to restart our client app. Client app is restarted. Now let me where it is. Now let me hit. Refresh this now we get the data. So we need to again restart our server. So this is solve our problem. No, this is not solving our problem. So we need to implement the actuators. Actuators. So hit the endpoint like actuator slash reference. We need to add one actuator endpoint. We need to add one actuator endpoints. So this is the issue, guys. This is the issue with change not refreshing automatically. 
so we need to do some uh, some over on the actual point of time so that will take our next session about this where we can do i know that how to do this okay so we need to implement one actuator in that um, client side client server or like okay actuator and hit that post api let's just and expose all endpoint here yeah, we can do this but we need to do we need to create automatically it should be restart okay that two things we need to discuss in the next session okay so up to this we completed guys so now we can understand how to get the data from that github right now we understood okay so we will meet next session there i will teach you how to automatically reload that updated data within the scheduler with using the schedulers and uh, how to how to use the actuators by using actuators hit the actuators first then automatically data will be finished. Yeah. 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 Yeah.